Hi friends, and I am going to do the final video. This is video number four of the TSA eBay knife lot, okay? And what I'm gonna show you today are some of the standouts. I'm not gonna go over every single one. I'm gonna go over the unique ones, and I have several repeats, and I'm gonna go over what they are, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna go over the interesting ones, right? Now, a lot of these interesting ones, I'm gonna go ahead and sell back in knife lots. I'm gonna put them together, put them back in that big box and sell them as knife lots. But I'm also going to put some aside because there's gonna be some keepers here. There's gonna be some that I'm gonna hold on to for posterity and uh, possibly just for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to a few of those and I'm gonna tell you which ones those are, okay? Now, there are some nice ones here. There are some nice ones that I'm very, very pleased with. So I'm going to go over all of these individually. I'm going to first do a lot of the obvious ones. Over here, I got a bunch of SD Classics. I got a bunch of Victorinox SD Classics. I even found some broken ones that, believe it or not, had a broken spring on the inside. So the blades kept popping out. Well, I took the parts off of those. I took the key rings off. I took the tweezers and toothpicks and I put them in this ones to make complete ones, right? So some of those might go in the knife lot, so I'm gonna sell. So I'm gonna start with those, but I'm gonna pull from here, there, everywhere, and I'm gonna show you what some of these goodies are, right? I definitely got my money back on this. I paid $83 for this knife lot plus $16 shipping. Okay, I'll admit, that's how much I paid. And I thought I overspent initially, but but honestly, uh, there was a little bit of junk in this lot, but most of these are keepers, you know? Uh, and what I mean by keepers are that I can either sell them or use them. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep a few and I'm gonna tell you which ones those are, okay? So yeah, let's start with some of the obvious ones. So these are the SD Classics. This is a typical condition. I did wipe most of these down um, and uh, cleaned them up a bit. I mean, they haven't gotten the polishing or anything, but I cleaned them up. So I'm gonna put these down when I, when, uh, when I show you one and uh, it's just a regular SD Classic, I'm just gonna put it down. So SD, here's a black SD. Here's another red SD, got a lot of red ones. I believe they're SD Classics. I mean, they mostly have like the, the the file, the knife, and then they have the scissors, most of them. So here is another black one. This one, yeah, same thing, file, knife, scissors. Here's a pink one. And the pink ones are a little bit more rare. So I like that pink one, I dig that. Uh, you know, uh, breast cancer awareness, you know, it's really cool to sport pink, you know, real men wear pink, that type of deal, right? So that's gonna be a keeper, keeping the pink one. <coughs> Now check this one out. This is an advertising one, but look at the the uh, badge on this. It has a serious dent in that badge and uh, has a chip right here, but it's a GE. You know, it's an old advertising GE. Uh, GE, you know, I, we bring good things to light. You know, that, that came out of my memory straight out of the 80s, right? And this is just another SD classic, right? And a lot of these, you know, they were really dirty on the inside. So I did a little bit of cleaning on them just to make them more passable. I think I'm going to keep that GE for now only because it's advertising, right? Here's a nice blue SD. And I like the color blue. And this one's a little bit dirty, as you can see. So I'm going to have to do a bit more cleaning on this one. Uh, but this is an advertising one. And it says Nina Paper. So I guess this was a paper company. And I like the color blue. To me, that's a standout. So I'm going to keep that. We're going to set that aside. Okay. Here's another red SD. Yep, put that in there. Here's another red SD. Yep, put that away in there. Now, I'm gonna show you this one. This is not a Victorinox, this is a Barlow. And uh, it's missing the tweezers, but it has uh, pretty much similar tools. Now, I didn't know what this was, but you know, it's just an oddity because I had to look with a magnifying glass, but. It does say Barlow, but it's a Barlow China. You know, it ain't no great thing, but it's just different. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. It's got some advertising on it, uh, Belmont Technologies or something like that. Yeah, it's a little bit interesting. So I'm gonna hold on to that. And well, that might be in a giveaway. <laughs> I'm not gonna hold on to it too much, right? Love this SD. Look at this, it's a yellow one. So I'm really loving this one. Um, I love the color yellow. That's really awesome, okay? and 
Here's another red one. Now this one does not have the key ring and I don't see where it was broken off. So I don't know why this one doesn't have the key ring, but it's got the same tools. So yeah, I don't know. Might throw that in a lot as well. Put it in there. Yes, here's another SD. Uh, same deal. Put that in there. Now this one's kind of interesting. This is advertising. It says Liberty a National Tire. Okay, so I guess it's a tire company. And there you have the Liberty emblem. And uh, it's an SD. I kind of like this one, um, even though it also does not have the keychain. Uh, I think I'm going to hold on to this one just because it's an advertising for tires. Put that there. All right, check this out. Here's another advertising. This one's called Anna Cole and then Whitehall. Don't know what it is, uh, but it's an SD, I believe. And yeah, put that in there. That can be in a knife lot. So I'm going to put all those back. All right, now let's get for the interesting stuff, okay? Now I'm going to look at some of the more interesting things. Check this out. This is also a keeper. This is an SD, but this is part of the Wounded Warrior Project, okay? So I believe these came out um, to help out uh, Wounded Warrior Project. And it's a really cool knife supporting our vets. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hold on to that one. Yep. Okay. Check this out. This is a Wenger. This is bigger than an SD. I had to look at it with a magnifying glass. I don't see any advertising. It's got a chip there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... Uh, had to really zoom in this one to see what it was. And I forgot what these were called, but it is a Wenger and there's the symbol. And I forgot exactly what these were called. It, uh, I don't know if it's an executive, might be the executive, but yeah. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. It's a little bit odd. Don't see them as often, okay. Check this guy out. It's another Victorinox, but this is not an SD. This is the Rover. So this one has got this really neat multi-tool right here where you have the cap lifter, wire stripper, and the flathead all in one. So because I like that, maybe that's why it's called the Rover. It's got some advertising, Pepsid advertising. One of my viewers saw this one and said it was probably like a giveaway at a conference or something like that. Maybe so, maybe so. I, I really like this thing. I'm gonna hold on to it. Um, you know, in case I get heartburn. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like it because of the tool, it's a Rover. Let me show you this little beauty, my friends. This right here is another Wenger, okay? And it's a really nice yellow gel. It's a yellow gel Wenger. It's a Sanibel Island, so this is clearly a souvenir knife. Still has the, the toothpick, as you can see right there, and the tweezers, and you can see through it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, had to do quite a bit of cleaning on this one, and it's still pretty dirty, guys. As you can see, I gave it a, a cleaning, but it needs more. This thing was dear tay. Uh, but other than that, you know, it seems to work pretty okay. So that to me is a keeper. These yellow translucents are getting harder and harder to find. As you can see, there's some dirt and grime that got under those scales, but I ain't gonna try and take those scales off and, and make it like come off and then have a hard time putting it back on. I'm just gonna leave it on. That dirt can stay there for a bit. All right, so let me show you the other stuff, right? So we're moving on now. These are keepers that I'm holding on to. We're gonna put those over there for now. Now, let's get away from the Swiss Army knives for a little bit. Now, let's go into some other stuff that I found that I really like. Uh, for example, this Camp King. This Camp King is different than other ones that I have seen. I'm gonna tell you why, because this has a couple of brass liners in there. I believe it's brass. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's brass just by the way it, it corrodes. There, see? I'm pretty sure that's a brass liner. I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me, but it just a, looks a little yellow to me. What do you think? Could be rust, but I think it's brass. You know, it's got that clamshell construction, but this still has the clevis. And check this out. This thing is just unused, untouched. And that blade just seems a little more solid. This seems just a little heftier than other Camp Kings. I don't know exactly what it is. It might be that that liner that's in there. Uh, it's got that nice drop point. It almost looks like a sheep's foot. So I really like that. Had more corrosion than you see there, but I gave it a light cleaning. And uh, this is, let's zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it. It's an Imperial, okay? So it's an Imperial Camp King. Close that a bit. Imperial Providence USA. All in all, it's, it's pretty nice. This is like a heavy duty knife. Um, I think somebody would love 
to have one of these. Look, I'm getting a closer look. It kind of looks like it might be just steel to me, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. And my eyes are not as good as they used to be, my friends. Okay, so it's got the awl on the Camp King as well. Good snap. You know, you got the cap lifter right there. Flat head, and of course, the can opener right there. It's got some oil. It even says can opener. So you know what that's for. And it's got a number there. It says P23917. Okay, I don't know what that is, just a serial number, I guess. I'm gonna close that up. This is a standout to me, and I think this is gonna be a keeper, just because this is a really fine example of a nice vintage Camp King that I think might be from the 50s. Uh, just a sweet knife, so yeah. I'm gonna hold on to that guy right there, okay? Now, let's pick out something that's also a non-Victorinox. Uh, let's pick out this Gerber. Check out this cute little Gerber knife right here. Um, I got two of them, and they both were in the lot. Now, I think these are basically the same model. It's just this one is bare grills, and this one isn't. I think they've got the same tools, although this one has a damaged tweezers that are really dirty and gunky. Um, but other than that, let me show you what they look like. This is going to go in the... Uh, cell pile so i'm going to put that back in the cell pile and we're going to press that back in there and we're going to show you what this is i do not know the name of this tool but it's a small gerber multi-tool and it's a bear grills <clears throat> as you can see there the bg stands for bear grills and this is a really neat little tool it's got a spring right there uh, those pliers look like they would do the job uh, little jobs but check out this little serrated blade nice little blade and then on this side, check out that nice little drop point blade. Doesn't that look wicked nice? Never used. It was really dirty. That's the number right there. Really sweet little knife, you know. Um, really like the way that looks. And uh, over here on this side, we have a couple of uh, tools. We have the flat head. And we also have the Phillips ah, right there. That is a flat Phillips. Yeah, check it out. Okay, so pretty good deal. I really like this one, but you know, this might be something that I'm going to uh, also put in a knife lot. So that's gonna go in one of my knife lots. That's gonna go in there. And uh, moving on. This is just a small, you know, probably like a things remembered knife. And it says uh, something on there that I can't quite make out. Hone, true hone. So I guess maybe it's for a company. And the interesting thing about this is that it is a Parker Cutco Surgical Steel Japan. So this is actually a finely made knife and it's got some brass liners, I think, deep in there. And it's a sharp little booger. And it's something just nice to have in your pocket. So that's a pretty good knife right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the cell pile. That's also gonna go in one of my knife lots, okay? So moving on, uh, let's go back to Victorinox. No, before we do that, I also got this guy. This is a generic knife. I don't know what it is. It might be an Ozark Trail, uh, but look at the shape of that blade. I, I kind of really like, and I'm digging the shape of that blade. And because of that, I'm gonna hold on to this. I think it's gonna be like a work knife. Um, kind of like it. It's camo. Um, you know, I think this would be a decent work knife. You know, it could be, maybe I'm gonna sell this. For now, it will go in the cell pile, just in case, you know, put that in there. But yeah, so let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I got a little closer. So let's keep going, okay? This oddity right here, this thing, I found out that with a AAA battery, it does work. It does not have a powerful beam, but this is the on-off button. I took the battery out because I was using it for something else. The battery goes in there. This thing looks like it's straight out of the early 90s or late 80s. Um, they tried to make it look like a Victorinox. It's got some very cheap tools here. Not the best quality, but they look they, like they work for a little while. Um, and uh, let me see, let me open this bad boy up a little bit. All right, I'll check this out. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's got this blade right there. So it's got that blade. It's got, what does that say? Stainless China, of course, okay. It's got uh, the flat head, 
Phillips, small flat head. You know, I can see using that small flat head. So this is interesting, you know, maybe something to keep in the car, I guess, something like that. So yeah, you know what, this, just because it's an oddity and it's a flashlight, I'm gonna keep it, so I'm gonna set that aside. Okay. Now, a lot of these things are personalized. A lot of these knives are personalized, and I'm not a big fan of that, but what you gonna do, right? So let me show you this one. I really dig this translucent. I've been wanting one of these translucents for a while now. Uh, this is the light blue Victorinox translucent. It is a two layer, I think. If you hear sirens in the background, it's because I live close to a high school and they just had a football game, <laughs> FYI. And uh, check this out. This was Krista Gross's knife, Krista Gross. So, um, you know, I like the blue translucent. I'm not digging that it's got somebody else's name in there, but it's engraved, it's in there deep. So what I'm probably gonna do is just use it as is and uh, give it some wear and tear. But this knife used to belong to Krista Gross. And that knife, that knife probably got confiscated by TSA. And one of my viewers likes to point out, you know, that it was stolen by the government and their possessions were taken. And yeah, I guess you could say that, um, you know, I can't see a, a terrorist using a Swiss army knife, although they did use box cutters. So, you know, anything's possible, right? But uh, this was a TSA confiscation. Now I have it. So I'm going to carry this. I'm going to put it to some use, guys. So Krista, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your donation. Thank you. So this is going to be a keeper. So this is going to the keep pile. Okay. So let's see what else I got. This is another little multi-tool. It's a craftsman. Okay. Now there's a lot of these, right? This one has scissors. I checked the scissors. They work pretty good. You know, some of the tools. Look at this tiny little Phillips. I mean, come on, that's not going to do anything, right? And some of these tools just really aren't that usable. I mean, they're just, if you're going to get something like this, you might as well just have an SD Classic or something similar. But I suppose it's better than nothing, you know? It's China made, you know, but you know, it's better than not having anything in a pinch. This is gonna go in the cell pile, okay? So let's zoom in a little bit more so you can get a better look at what I'm working with here so far. Some of these are gonna go kind of quick, okay? These, I got four or five, let's see, two, four, six. I got six of these things, okay? What are these? These are Leatherman Micras, all right? These are not that bad. These are kind of sweet, okay? They got scissors, okay? And they're Leatherman, okay? They got that file. And this is something to keep on your keychain. They got a little knife there too. Something else here that I'm probably gonna have difficulty pulling out. Uh, looks like a flathead. Okay, I don't know how you pull that out. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that alone. It's a flathead. You got these weird tweezers or maybe it's a tuning fork, I don't know. And uh, you have this tool, whatever that is, but it's got a very small flat head, you know, and those very small flat heads are so useful because you can use them for eyeglasses, you can use them to clean knives, the springs and knives, you can use them for a lot of things, love it. Anyway, guys, guess what? Each one of these is probably worth like 10, 15 bucks, okay? I got six of them, all right? And they're all in about the same condition. I think one of them doesn't have a key ring, uh, but the other ones do. This one doesn't have a key ring, I don't know why. Maybe it broke off. I can't see where it broke off. Maybe there. Doing so. But uh, but yeah, and these are all really cool. And I got six of them, okay? So I'm probably going to put this also in a knife lot, mix it up. I'm making knife lots, random knife lots with maybe some other junk and some knives as well, okay? So yeah, I'm almost done, guys. Hang with me, hang with me, okay? I've got a couple of interesting ones, all right? So let's pull this up. At first, when I pulled this out, I thought that it was a uh, Victorinox pruner, but this is a Royal Imports. Check that out. It's kind of spooky emblem right there. Royal Imports. It's got these nice brass accents. What threw me off was that it's got a key ring, and I know all the Victorinox pruners that I know don't have key rings, okay? But Stuart Harvey, Stuart the man Harvey, pointed out that this was used to cut twine, like for packages, for a shipping company or something like that. And look, this is only sharpened on one side, okay? Interesting. And this is not really sharp at all. So if I'm gonna use this, I need to sharpen that. So that is really cool. You know what, that's gonna be keeper because that's an oddity, so I'm gonna keep that. 
Okay, got a little roughy. I got a little rough. A little. Sometimes you got to get a little rough. Got a little rough rider, and it's a Stockman right there. And uh, I forgot which series this was part of, but uh, maybe you can recognize it by looking at that. Let's see. Rough rider. Tested. Sharp. Not bad, not bad. I mean, this thing wasn't even used. It just sat there in somebody's pocket. And yeah, there it is, Rough Rider. I think there's a model number. Nope, oh, okay. Not bad. You know what? This little guy is gonna go in the knife lot to sell. So I'm gonna put that back. Somebody's gonna get that, right? And you know, there's some other standouts here, okay? I got this weird Columbia knife that's like a Victorinox wannabe. Interesting uh, tools on this one. It's got that same knife that you would find on a Victorinox, uh, but it's got this thing, very similar to the Rover, except it has a Phillips. It's almost like they wanted to copy the Victorinox Rover, but kind of make it look similar to an Alox. It's very, very interesting. Um, other side, we have some Caesars and we have that pretty that little tool that's like a nail file but it's also flathead and you know in this compartment i suspect there's a battery in there and this thing lights up so it's got a red beam so not bad it still lights up not too strong but it still lights up aluminum casing and it's got this langer that's columbia that's kind of nice okay and it also has some tweezers right in here oh no this is not tweezers look it's a small phillips Huh, very interesting. All right, we're gonna put that back and I'm gonna expand the view to go back there to show you that, guys. All right, so i put that back in there. You know, with this, this I'm gonna go ahead and sell. It's gonna go in the sell pile also. And you know, there's only so many things that I wanna keep that I really enjoy. And have you ever seen a beaver knife? It's just a beaver knife, just a beaver knife. See the beaver? Beaver or is it Bever? Just a Bever knife. It's a Wenger. It's a two-layer Wenger. It's got the tweezers missing the toothpick. And it's got the keychain ring. It's got the can opener. It's got the awl, a nice long awl. It's got that symbol right there. It's not the metal one. It's kind of painted on. This is a nice looking Wenger. It really is. Uh, check out the blade. It's an pristine condition guys i don't know what this is called uh maybe one of you guys can tell me but you know what i call it i call it a keeper okay this thing hasn't even been freaking used so i call it a keeper it might be like a backpacker or something like that i call it a keeper amigos this just has a nice little weight to it it's belonga knife detector right there all right and then you got this guy right here, MNC. I don't know who MNC is, but this is a three-layer Victorinox climber. Uh, it's got all the amenities you would expect of a climber. It's in black scales. It's got the toothpick and tweezers. This is just a nice knife, very little use. Somebody didn't use this thing at all. Um, you know, I, I, I am liking this, okay? And this has the hole in it, okay? Really liking this knife, and you know what? Uh, I haven't decided if this is going to be a keeper or not. The the uh, engraving does throw me off a bit. And because of that, I might just go ahead and throw this in the cell pile. I don't own any Victorinox climbers. I, I'm just not a fan of that, uh, that little twine holder or parcel holder. Not a fan of that. It kind of bothers me. I'm OCD about that. But you know, you know what? Uh, I like it. I'm going to put it in the cell box. Okay, I'll put it there. I just did it. I did it. I put it in the cell box. Okay, let's look at this one. This is a cheap little China knife, wood handle stuck on. It's from the Navajo Nation in Arizona. You know, when it's got an L on it. You know, whenever I go to the Grand Canyon, I see all these knives just hanging there. But this thing will be like 15 bucks or something like that. Now I'm like, I don't want to pay 15 bucks for that. Well, guess what? Now I have it. There's the uh, symbol, uh, Coco Pelli right there. Uh, I kind of like it. I mean, the L, I can do without that since that's not my initial. But, you know, this will be a reminder of all the times I didn't buy one of these at the Grand Canyon. So that is a keeper. Only because of that reason, I'm a little nostalgic about it, right? So let's move on a bit. Check this out, all right? This is a Gerber. 
This is a Gerber look. Somebody used the heck out of this thing, guys. Somebody really used this thing. And uh, one of these uh, belt ones fell off because they were probably using it on their belt. But it's still a good sheath, you know. It, it, it's still sewed in. Velcro's good. This is the Gerber suspension. I'm not going to get rich off of this. You can buy a brand new one for $20 to $25, and this one is used. I checked all the amenities. They work. Um, this Gerber suspension is in really good shape. Um, it's got this uh, system where you can retract the tools, pull them back in there, and the springs work great, and there's a spring in there to help you make it a little more comfortable. I do like this very much, this Gerber suspension. Um, I'm going to end up making that a keeper. Now, remember how much I paid for this. You saw, how, you saw how many knives were in that box, right? You saw how many knives were in that box, and you see all the keepers that I'm keeping and I think that I made out like a bandit on this thing. I think that I honestly, you know, did pretty well in this knife lot. Because even just with the keepers that I have, they're probably worth a hundred bucks or more. Um, the ones that I'm gonna sell, I'm probably gonna get that money back. And what I hope to do later on, if I find another good one, is I hope to get another knife lot. It's just fun, it's a good hobby. Get another knife lot and do another show for you guys or another few shows, okay? We're almost done. Let me give you a close up look at these. Okay, this is a Coca-Cola advertising knife. Look at the scratches on that. Drink Coca-Cola in bottles, my friends. Look at that brass, brass. It's kind of cheaply constructed, so I don't know if it's very old. This might be a very cheap store item. Good snap open, and this is a Flying Falcon, and it's frost. It's a frosty, guys. Look at that, it's a frosty knife. Flying Falcon. Okay, well, it's a nice Coke advertising knife. You know, I might keep it. I love me some Diet Coke. I love me some Diet Dr. Pepper more than Diet Coke. I love me some Diet Pepsi more than that. But yeah, I'll put it there. Okay. Also got this one. Don't know what brand this is. It's got a little cross in there. Uh, might be Salvation. I don't know. Hebrews 412. It's a nice little Stockman. Cheaply made. Um, but uh, we'll get the job done. You cannot access the sheep's foot. Uh, you have to pull a blade out to access the sheep's foot, which is interesting. Uh, you have to pull a small blade out because the small blade gets in the way of the sheep's foot. Kind of a cheap looking, cheesy sheep's foot. Yeah, you know, this is gonna go in the cell pile. I like it because it's got that religious theme, but it's gonna go in the cell pile. All right, then all of those that I'm showing you, they're all gonna go back in the cell pile. And then I'm going to be pulling them off and selling them as lots, okay? So then we're down to these four Victorinox. And, you know, I pulled this one out second, and I couldn't make out what it says, and then I realized it says the waiter. So that's what it is. It's a Victorinox waiter. It's got the keychain, the corkscrew, and uh, it's got the blade, decent shape, couple scratches, Officer Suisse, and then it has this tool right here which is the uh, cap lifter, uh, flat head wire stripper. And it's like that combo tool, okay? But yeah, I have that waiter. And then guess what? I have another waiter, same deal right here. Two waiters, all right? And dare I say three waiters? Yep, I have three waiters, amigo. So I got three Victorinox waiters right there. Um, not bad. You know, they're not that expensive. Each one of those is like a $10 knife, you know, but they're good shape. Each one of them, they got some scratches from just being moved around, but they're in decent shape. And last but not least, I have this bad boy. Um, this, uh, says Zachary on it. So it says Zachary. It's got an engraving on it. I have a couple of friends named Zachary. So, uh, here we go right there. And this is a two-layer Victorinox. I believe this is a Spartan. And that engraving is pretty deep. So that might go in the cell pile also, you know, in case somebody named Zachary wants to buy it. And uh, probably a couple of these might go in the cell pile. I might keep one or two waiters for myself and sell the rest. So let me know what you think, guys. Do you think that I got my money's worth for $83 and $16 shipping for a grand total of like around 100 I think I did. I think I did get my money's worth. I think that uh, 
this was a good deal for me and I lucked out with that deal. So these are gonna go in the cell pile and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add those to the other huge box of knives that I have. This was the cream of the crop right here. This is what I'm gonna keep for myself and will now be going into my toolbox so that I can use it in my EDC, my daily EDC. All right, amigos, so this concludes its series. I'm finishing right around 30 minutes. Y'all take care. God bless you, my friends, and happy hunting, amigos.